The BHL Pix Wizard fits into my arm hand so well you'd think I'd have designed it myself. Wait. I did. I'm Ben Eller, and this pick is sick. Well, hello, kids, and welcome to a brand new installment of This Pick is Sick. Here's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. I'm really excited about this episode because we're going to be talking about a pick that I myself helped design along with Brock Little of BHL Picks, which is this dude right here, the BHL Wizard. BHL Picks is a one-man boutique pick company that's run by Brock Little, who's an Australian guy that lives in China that has a passion for picks and monkeys. About seven or eight months ago, I ordered some pics from Brock just to see what they were all about because I kept seeing them pop up all over my Facebook feed and stuff. I ordered the Megalodon and the HP and a couple of his other popular models. They showed up at my doorstep quickly and I was super impressed by the quality and the materials that he uses. I knew that Brock also does custom orders too, so I started talking with him about designing a pic that had features of all kinds of other pics that I'd used that I loved and rolling them all together into one uber pic, which is what we've ended up with here. We did about six to eight different prototypes, trying out different materials and stuff like that. This is the dude that ended up passing the test. Let's talk a little bit about some of the specs of this dude. The thickness that we ended up going with here is one and a half millimeters, which is what I find perfect for a little bit of everything, from playing riffs and solos, all the way to strumming on the old grandpa guitar. It's made out of high-grade Ultim, which is a super durable plastic that I find sounds great on acoustic and electric guitars, which is something that was really important for me in a pick. And another really cool thing about this pick that we put into here too is it's got this speed bevel on the edges. It's just a really slight beveling on the sides of the pick that allows for maximum slippage when alternate picking. The speed bevel is a feature that I like to see in picks that you just don't see very often. You can see over here on the outside edge of the pick it's kind of slightly ground down at an angle on that side. And over here on the other side of the pick it's ground down the same way. That way whenever you're alternate picking, if I do a downstroke, the string really slides off of this side of the pick. And when I do an upstroke, it really just sort of glides off of there. Brock will make this in a right-handed bevel, which is what this is, or a left-handed bevel for you southpaws out there. So if you order this pick, be sure to specify in your order whether you want the right-hand bevel or the left-hand bevel. Brock also offers this pick with the option of doing his signature curved face design, which if I turn the pick sideways here, you'll see what I mean. It just kind of generally makes the pick a little bit more elliptical, sort of tapering it at the edges that way and that way a little bit more. Turn it that way, you can really see. Again, really awesome attention to detail that I've never really seen in other picks before. It's really cool. And uh, the curved face is nice because basically you can hold on to the pick here, and at the back it doesn't feel quite as bulky, so you can kind of pinch down on it a little bit harder. Really cool feature. You can order it with or without that. Here it is in comparison with a regular guitar pick and a sporty Dunlop Jazz 3, so you can get an idea of the size of this guy. It's a little bit smaller than a regular pick, but it's a little bit bigger than a Jazz, which to me has always been the real sweet spot when it comes to picks. There's not nearly enough manufacturers out there making picks that fit these dimensions. I dig it. But enough chit chat, let's hear this wizard do work. <laughs>
now that you've heard this guy in action on this sexy Sir Satin, let's do ski the review ski. Grip is a really important factor for me as a player because I can't be dropping these things while I'm playing on stage and stuff. So we did a lot of things to ensure that this pick has a really great amount of grip to it. These holes that Brock drills in the pick just give you a little bit more gripping surface, which is something I've done to regular picks for years, is drill holes in them. Plus, the surface is covered in these kind of micro-fine etchings, which makes it stick to your fingers a little bit better too. Although those etchings do not extend to the actual part of the pick that hits the string. So the bevel and the tip are really clean and uh, buffed and polished here, but the top and back of the pick are unpolished, so you can hang on to it even better. I like a pick that I can hang on to securely, but at the same time I can move it around if I want to. So if I'm going from strumming something to picking something really articulate, I can move it around in my fingers a little bit. Some picks are really just too grippy and you can't really adjust them on the fly very easily. On a scale of 1 to 10, if a 1 is a grease ball pick that's always slipping out of your fingers and a 10 is something that feels like it's super glued to your hands, I'm going to give this guy about an 8, which to me is perfect because again, it grips tight, but at the same time you can move it if you want to. When it comes to the tone of the attack of the pick hitting the string, I like something with a little bit more pronounced attack than your average Diamond Dozen guitar pick. I've tried out some of those crazy high-end boutique picks that get really obnoxiously chirpy whenever you play with them, especially on a distorted electric guitar. You get this high-end kind of chirp at the front of every note that's just impossible to ignore. I don't like that. This guy gives me exactly what I need. It has more attack than a regular pick, but at the same time it's not so pronounced that you lose track of what the fundamental note that's happening after the attack is. Perfect for me. If a 1 is something that sounds like hitting the string with a piece of felt, and a 10 is one of those ultra chirpy obnoxious boutique picks, I would rate this guy about a 7, which for me is perfect. Durability is also a really important factor for me in a pick, because if I'm going to go out and buy a boutique pick, I want it to last a little while, you know? This Ulta material is fantastically durable. I've had these picks for several months now, but I've been waiting to do this episode because I wanted to use one for a while and see how they wore down. This is the very original first wizard that we ever kind of put together here, and I have played this pick a ton. I've used it in the studio, I've used it live, I've used it teaching, I've used it making videos for you guys all over the place. I've used the crap out of this pick, and you can see as compared to a brand new one, the tip and stuff is still basically intact. It's really, really fantastic. Maybe the speed bevel is a little more pronounced now, just where I've played on it so much, but it's taken a really long time for it to get there. So, these things last a long time, which is a really great feature for me to have. I would say in terms of 1 to 10, if 10 is something absolutely indestructible, I'd put these guys at about an 8. So there you go, guys. Everything you need to know about the pick that makes my heart skip a beat. You can buy the wizard exclusively from the BHL Picks Etsy store. I'll provide a link for that down here in the description. While you're on his Etsy store, you might also come across this guy, which is the complete crazy beast mode 4mm Wizard Pro, which is a pick that Brock designed as sort of a, an upgraded version of the regular Wizard pick. They're just more to love. This is an awesome beast of a pick that has become one of my absolute favorite things to use to track leads and stuff with. More on this guy later. Complete review coming soon. With every order you get two wizards and I recommend trying one with the speed bevel and one with the curved face. So you can try that out and see what you think of both of those options. They aren't the cheapest picks in the world, but you gotta remember you're paying for a handmade boutique item where one guy goes out and buys the highest grade material possible, takes it back, shapes a beautiful pick out of it by hand, He's also the guy that packages it, puts it in the mail, and all that other stuff. So there's a lot of work that goes into every one of these bad boys. Plus, it's going to last you a long time anyway. I'm extremely proud of how this guy has turned out. The feedback on it so far has been fantastic. I can't wait for more of you all to give it a shot and see what you think about it. A huge thanks goes out to Brock Little of BHL Picks for working with me on this guy and trying out all my crazy stupid ideas that I wanted to put into motion and experimenting and going over prototype after prototype with me. I'm extremely proud with what we've ended up with. Thanks a lot, Brock. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to follow me and BHL Picks on Instagram. I'll put our names up here on the screen while I'm jib-jabbering away at you. Be sure to leave me a comment and let me know what other picks you'd like to see featured on this show next, and I'll try to get around to reviewing them. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for another episode sometime soon. Cheers.